There is something about deck builders that just pajama my cat, if you know what I'm saying. They really knee my bee. You could even go far as to say that they, well, slay my spire. And at the same time, I really, really like roguelites. You see, they really socks my fox. If you know what I'm saying, they're really, they really bomb my the. You could go far as to say that they actually really slay my spire. <laughs> That's right. Today, it's finally time to look at it. Hello there. Welcome to my table. Today we're going to be talking about Inscription. It's a video game that is both a deck builder and a roguelite at the same time. And it was honestly one of the most interesting games to have come out in 2021. Not only cementing itself as an indie darling for the year, but also one of the best games that actually came out that year. But, well, you may not want to hear about that, so go on, you're, you're free to leave the table. I sort of lied there. Not so much about how Inscription's an incredible game, no, no. More so about your ability to leave. You see, Inscription has a lot of horror elements to it that really make it shine. However, I'm not really here to, ju to just talk about those horror elements, as yes, while Inscription does have them, and it is better for them at the same time, like I said, you can't leave. So pull up a chair. And let me tell you how the thing that makes Inscription great isn't just the horror and creepy elements that it's so well known for, but actually the fact that it's just a really good game. <laughs> As stated already, Inscription is both a deck builder and a rogue light. So you start with an opening small deck of cards and slowly but surely build up your deck with a variety of extra cards, creating a deck unique to you, all in the hopes of achieving victory. But so far, so simple. There are a couple of things that make Inscription really quite special, and that's firstly just how the game is played. Taking place on this board, you place your units out in front of you like the world's most rustic game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Except your units attack directly whatever sits in front, be it opposing monster or your foe. This immediately leads to a lot of interesting dynamics where you're trying to work out if you can just power through and deal the required damage to win, or try and set up a defensive strategy to take out or block the other units. This, alongside the plethora of abilities that units can have, means that encounters are always interesting and bizarre. Cards shift on the table, some respawn, and others exist only to die. Yes, you can't have too much of a good thing now, can you? Sacrifices need to be made. And this is due to the fact that a lot of your cards will have a cost, and that cost is blood. So in order to pay this blood sacrifice price, you need to, well, sacrifice a lot of animals, primarily squirrels. <sighs> you see, I couldn't actually get a squirrel, but I was really hoping that this imagery, well, I was hoping it'd be a threatening and disturbing enough of an image. Yes, welcome to the blood system, and its cousin, the bone system. Alongside your main deck, you'll find a small deck of squirrels, simple cards for whom their only reason to exist is to perish. Yet, here's the rub. On your turn, you can only draw one card from one deck. Each combat scenario rapidly becomes this delightful puzzle as you're trying to work out when to try and draw which card and the risk that you'll possibly end up pulling one of your more expensive cards before you've even got an appropriate amount of blood on the board. Ah, oh, no, all this adds up to is that you also get the opportunity to crush your own units just as they're about to die. <laughs> 
Wheels within wheels define the card game, and it is such a satisfying puzzle and system that allows you to pull off something truly magical. Oh, hello again. I'm wearing a wizard hat now because I'm a wizard because we were talking about magic. And yes, while it is fun to construct a deck out of preset cards and all these sorts of bits and pieces, building a deck of your own, allowing for various abilities and skills to pop off into this machine of destruction and despair. Where Inscription really stands out from amongst the other deck builders of its type is, well, that last inherent spark, that last piece of <sighs> magic. During your roguelite adventure, you'll come across a number of various bonuses and boons. These can be anything from strengthening your cards by settling up to a cozy warm fire and just enjoying that warm fire. <sighs> you can also apply a bonus effect to an entire class of cards through the power of totems, or even just simply infuse one card with the essence of another through the powers of ritualistic sacrifice. You see, this is all important because it adds even more variation to your inscription journey. If you found a card particularly lacking, fret not. You can now make your wolf take to the skies and fly. <laughs> It just allows them to bypass what's in front of them. But you are limited entirely to whatever your brain can come up with, as, as well as whatever cards you come across. And my goodness, it's just such an interesting puzzle to squirrel your way through. <laughs> This little roguelite experience is so engrossing that there was even a piece of free DLC, Casey's Mod, which is just more of it. More of it! Endlessly, forever, onwards and onwards into the distance of the infinite more! More cards! More! Hello again. I'm no longer a wizard, as you might be able to tell from my lack of wizard hat, as well as my lack of wizard magic. Anyway, a key theme of Inscription that runs through the heart of it that you might have been able to pick up by now is the puzzle element. If you see, the gameplay itself presents this delightful puzzle that you're always trying to solve as you're trying to work out how your different skills interact with one another as well as how you to get past specific scenarios that are filled with various unique obstacles and bits and pieces that you're trying to get by. But at the same time, the game and I might actually have a little bit more wizard magic left up my sleeve. The game is filled with puzzles. Oh God. And this is really interesting because there's so many for you to solve and they all incorporate this sort of escape room style puzzle scenario because at the end of the day, you are still trying to escape the room. It's still locked. Come, join me at the table. Without spoiling much of the game, you might have realized another strong component of Inscription. And that's that everything is creepy as heck all the time. Inscription is filled with an inherent eeriness throughout its campaign that will always keep you on your toes in an increasingly meta story. Coming from the developer of Pony Island, a simple game that steadily corrupted itself as it twisted and turned into some hellish machinations, it should be no surprise that, well, everything just feels a little off. The thing is, when I finally sat down to play Inscription, it was late one Christmas night in which I had been locked inside for two solid weeks with no human interaction due to having COVID and the game honestly scared the heck out of me at times. It is so brilliantly eerie and creepy. Everything always keeps you on edge as you face off against Leshy and his ever-increasing cast of strange characters. 
but it is fundamentally quite easy to have a game that feels a bit wrong. Because all you have to do is put in a bunch of stuff, 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 stuttering effects and a bunch of fourth wall breaking bits and pieces. But Inscription manages to do this in a way that j j j j j Hello? What? <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, Inscription will get a lot of attention for its creepy undertones and twists and turns in the story that always keep you on edge, and rightfully so, because they're done so well. But at the same time, I do think it's worth mentioning and worth paying attention to the card game element, the gameplay that beats heartily throughout the game, really making it just such a solid experience. And ultimately turns this creepy, wonderful game into a masterpiece. Okay. Uh... Hi, and thank you for watching my video. It was about um, Inscription. <laughs> if you liked it or have any thoughts about it, let me know in the comments section. Inscription is such an incredible indie game, card game experience. It just came out on console, so you should definitely give it a go, am I right? Um, otherwise, if you want more bits and pieces, up here we've got a video about Horizon Forbidden West's board game that was inside the game, the in-universe board game. Or down here we have another delightful indie game from last year, Death's Door. Or you can just click on my face orb, uh, where my face is, and that will allow you to subscribe. Thank you, and goodbye.